Now, this latest arrest, Frankie Clinton. I had a talk with him, and he didn't seem any too helpful. 34 years I've been on the force, Your Honor. And I don't mind telling you, I've seen everything. Tough guys, hoodlums, gunmen. But this is the first time I've run across anything like this. Looks like the whole new generation has suddenly gone berserk. Mm, it's not too hard to understand, Inspector. These youngsters are just the products of their environment. Oh, I know some of these kids came from privileged families, but that doesn't entirely constitute environment. It's not only where you live, it's how you live. The teenagers of the new generation grew up in a time of nerves. Newspapers screaming headlines of race riots, revolution, earthquake, back of it all speed. Everyone rushing nowhere to get nowhere, and for no reason. It's a fast life, Inspector. A whirlpool of speed and confusion and all these kids are caught right in the middle of it. Well, maybe you've got something there, ma'am. Sergeant Kerrigan to see you, Your Honor. Thank you. Must be the man I sent for. Come in, Kerrigan. Hello, Chief. I want you to meet the judge. Judge Valentine, may I present Detective Sergeant Dave Kerrigan, one of our more promising plain clothes men. How do you do, ma'am, Your Honor? <laughs> How do you do, Sergeant? Won't you please sit down, gentlemen? Thank you. Now, you've been highly recommended, Sergeant, by the inspector. He says you're a very capable officer. Good man to learn from, ma'am. <laughs> I didn't teach him to be so modest. I suppose you're acquainted with our little problem, Sergeant. Just enough to know it's not so little, Your Honor. Then I presume you know that the juvenile delinquency rate has jumped tremendously. I'll well, some information for you to start on, Kerrigan. This is a list of similar burglaries in the last year. Look it over. See if you find anything significant. High school kids, hopped up. That's right, high school kids, hopped up. Hot rod races, burglary, vandalism, arson. You name it, we've had it. All done by kids. Kids so hopped up they couldn't tell you what they'd done. And somebody's been supplying these kids with the stuff at a price. What a lousy racket that is. It's more than that, Sergeant. Somebody's making addicts out of these kids, and for one purpose, to get them to do his dirty work and exchange for more pills. Your job is to find out who that is. Okay, Chief, I guess that means get out and dig. That's right. You know the routine. Question Frankie's friends, his neighbors, anyone you can. Keep moving. Run down every clue. You know, my fiance has a kid brother in high school. They used to live in Frankie's neighborhood and moved away when the mother died. Maybe I could pick up something from him. Yes, we know. That's one of the things I had in mind. Bob Winter may be just the contact we need to crack this thing wide open. I'm sure Miss Winter will understand, sir. After all, these kids are the future of this city. We'll have to get rid of any threat to them. Have a talk with Clinton. Here's a transcript of a recorded interview. Take it and see if you can find out more about it. Okay, Chief. See you later, Your Honor. Good luck to you, Sergeant. Inspector, somehow all of this has a familiar smell. You have an idea, Your Honor? You remember Umberto Scali? Some years ago, when I was first appointed, 
I sentenced him to the penitentiary for contributing to the delinquency of a minor. He'd given benzodrine to a 17-year-old, and the boy had held up a gas station. It's Riley. He's out. He's a mobile on the north side of town. Legitimate enough. Caters to fat society dames. Exercising and that stuff. Three, four, down, up, down, up. One, two, three, four, down, up, down, up. Down, Look at those cows, Donnie. Wouldn't that kill you? <laughs> you shouldn't kick boss. Those blimps really line your pockets. You're sure right about that. At ten bucks per One, treatment. Two, I got no complaints. Three, I still have to laugh, though. Look at them. Up. Right. Up. Left. Up. Right. It's like trained elephants, up, eh, Tony? Left. Flip them up, Phil, run them up, around until they're ready to drop right. and send them on their way. Up, at ten bucks left, per copy. Up, <laughs> right, what about those pills? Up, what are they anyway? Left, any good? Up, sure they're good. Right. Yeah. Up, Left. Take a look. Up, They're the nitrophenol right. tablets. Up. And they'll burn the light off these girlies without the exercise, as far as that goes. <laughs> Little money makers. Hey, boss, will they hurt any? You know, I was thinking maybe I ought to try a couple. I'm getting a bit of a spare tire here. <laughs> Lay off those things, Tony. They'll knock you over like that if you got a bum heart. Oh, I see. Well, let the dames keep them then. Now, these fellows have got you into this. They aren't your friends. I don't see any of them trying to help you. Why don't you tell us who they are? I don't want to rat on nobody. That's the underworld code, Frankie. If you want to get this mess cleared up, you'll have to show us that you want to be on the side of law and order. I guess so. What do I have to do? Just give us answers to our questions. Now, the boy that was with you, what was his name? Smith. Fred Smith. How long have you known him? Not very long. Where did you get acquainted with him? I was playing pool. He wanted to play me a game of pool. Did anyone else know him? I don't know. The night you were arrested, the doctor said you had taken something. What was that? I don't know. Come on, Frankie. You better tell me. A Benny. A Benny? You mean a Benzedrine tablet? Yeah. Where did you get it? He gave it to me. You mean Fred Smith gave it to you? Yeah. Where did he get it? Did he tell you? No. I don't know. Frankie, if you could tell us who's behind these robberies that have been going on, Who's supplying kids like yourself with pennies and goofies? If you could tell us that, I... I honest, I don't know. You must have some idea. No, honest, Sarge, I, I tell you, but I don't know. All right, Frankie. You think it over for a while. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Come along. I think he knows more than he's telling. Looks like we gotta find out the hard way. Well, Kerrigan, get out and hit the pavements. Good luck. I know. Take care of my feet. Okay, Chief. Hello, Holmes. That Clinton kid been released yet? Not yet, Mr. Scally. He's hot as a firecracker. If you ask me, we better stay away from him for a while. I'm not asking you. Sometimes you say something that has a little sense in it. Clinton is hot, and so are the rest of the kids he hangs around with. We gotta take our chances. I gotta have some more stuff. Get your hands in there. The jig's up. Places, it's the law. Hello, honey. And to what suspicious occurrence do I owe the honor of your company? Just a routine checkup. Thought I might catch you with one of my rivals. <laughs> Terribly sorry you missed him. He just left along with the other six. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. <laughs> oh, you. Really, honey, how come you're off so early? Got the day off to count my blessings. How do you mean? I've been put on a new assignment. Been transferred from the burglary detail to the narcotics division. It's this way, Allie. Frankie's hot and sold kids, right? Yeah. OK. All we got to do, then, is break in someone else. Oh, we ain't got no time. I got to have the stuff right away. But well, maybe we ought to take it a little easy for a while. Right, Mr. Scally. And I've already started on some new contacts. Yeah? With who? A fellow by the name of Bob Winter. A good guy, and he don't talk. Hi, sis. Hello, Dave. What's cooking? Hello, dear. How's school? 
Ah, you know, it's the same old grind. How are you doing, Tom? Did you get the Congressional Medal yet? Not yet, but I'm working on it. Are you in a hurry now, Bob? I'd like to talk to you. Yeah, I gotta get my trunks. I got a swimming date with Marge. Why, what's up? I'm on a new assignment. I'm on a narcotics detail now. Narcotics squad? Say, slip me some pennies if you find any lying around, will you? Bob, be serious for a moment. Okay, sis. Now, what can I do for you, Hawkshaw? Do you know Frankie Clinton? Sure. Sure, I know Frankie. Then you read that he was arrested last week on a burglary charge. Yeah. So? When was the last time you saw Frankie, Bob? Oh, about two months ago, I guess. Why? Well, there's a drive on against juvenile delinquency. The department thinks that you can help us. Me? Well, I don't know how, but if there's anything you want to know, I'll try to tell you. Swell, I knew you would, Bob. Now, this has nothing to do with you. But the inspector knows that you were friends with Frankie Clinton. He thinks that possibly you might know something about the rest of the kids in that gang and their activities. I'm, I'm afraid I can't give you much help there, Dave. Like I say, I haven't seen any of the gang for a couple of months, and I never did mix in any of their activities, as you call it. What about Frankie, Holmes? Do you know anything about me? No, I know a thing, Mr. Scally. You see, he's never been up to the house, and all he knows is that a guy by the name of Simmons is paying him. You're sure about this? If he knows anything and spells right... This Judge Ballantyne, snooping dame. She'd love to get something on me. Have to put me away for 20 years. I don't want her to get that information, Holmes. Ballantyne. Ballantyne. Say, Margie Ballantyne, the girlfriend of this guy I was telling you about, Bob Winter. Why, that's the judge's daughter. They go together. The judge's daughter? Say, what kind of a mess are you trying to get me into? Suppose this Winter kid talks to her and she squeals to her mama. Then what? Winter won't talk, Mr. Scally. Besides, if you've got the judge's daughter where you can keep an eye on her. Hello, everybody. Oh, excuse me, Jerry. I, I thought you were in here with Bob. Come on, Margie. Bob will be right out. Oh, don't get up. Margie, this is Dave Carrigan. Dave, this is Margie Ballantyne, Bob's girl. How do you do? Oh, I've heard lots about you from Jerry, Sergeant Carrigan. I guess you're the best detective since Sherlock Holmes. Don't pay any attention to Jerry, Margie. She thinks if she can get a job as my press agent, she'll get 10% of my salary. 10%? <laughs> Better wind up with more than that. That you, Marge? In the flesh. Be right out, chick. I'm trying on my new French bathing suit. Bob, winners, okay. if you wear that suit, I won't go with you. Only kidding, babe. Ballantyne, Margie Ballantyne. Say, you're not in a relation to Judge Ballantyne, are you? Yes, sir. Daughter, according to the 14th section, Article 192 of the Marital Code. Well, well, I just spent a very charming morning with your mother. Oh? What'd you give Bob? Life at a chair. She and Bob are both alike. David's on a, on a new case, Marge. Oh. It's all connected with narcotics. <clears throat> it's about the juvenile problem, Margie. Oh, yes, Mother's been telling me about that. Well, it's about time. That's a woman for you, Dave. You never wait less than an hour for them, and they complain about the minutes. It's been 14 minutes and 28 seconds to be exact. <laughs> Is that so? Yes. Go on, you two. There's your transportation. See you later, you two. Bye, Jerry. Bye. Bye, Dave. Nice to have met you. Goodbye. Where do they swim? One of Bob's friends, a fellow by the name of Hal Holmes, has an uncle who is quite wealthy. He has a big home on Magnolia with a beautiful swimming pool. Kids have been going up there lately. His uncle, Mr. Stevens, is away most of the time on business. Sounds like a good deal. Bob known him long? Holmes, I mean. Not too long. They met in a cafeteria where Holmes was working. Working in a cafeteria with rich relatives? Well, he seemed like a pretty independent kid. Must be. Is he a nice kid? Oh, he's all right, I suppose. Still, there's something about him. Oh, I don't know. I guess I either like someone or I don't. That's so. How do you feel about me? Mm. Oh. Here comes Bob Andy and the girls. Which one's the Valentine kid? The dish in the white suit. Well. What's say? Uh, Hi, Bob. Yeah. How you doing, Andy? Well, I think you know Margie Valentine, and oh. this is Andy's sister, Frances. Hello. Hello. Well, uh, make yourselves comfortable. And if there's anything you want, just holler. 
This sure is a keen place. This your house, Hal? No, uh, not exactly. It belongs to my uncle, Mr. Stevens, but he's away most of the time, and I have the run of the place. Uncle always said that any friend of mine is always welcome. What do you know? This is really fine. How about a fast dunk? Okay, last one in is the sissy. Okay. Come on, Marge. Right behind you. Come on. Come no, I go on ahead, Marge. I want to talk to Hal a minute. Cute kid. Yeah, she sure is. Say, Hal, there's something I gotta tell you. Sure, what is it, fella? Well, I read in the papers the other day where Frankie Clinton was arrested in... Frankie Clinton? Frankie Clinton? I'm not sure I know the name. Oh, yeah, the kid that was picked up for robbing that warehouse. Why, uh, what about him? Well, I know Frankie. I haven't seen him for quite a while, though. But you know that Marge's mother is juvenile court judge and that she started some kind of a drive against juvenile delinquency. Yeah? Well, somehow or other, the police department found out that Jerry and I but Jerry's my sister, came from the same neighborhood that Frankie did, and that I know him. Well, you see, Jerry's boyfriend is a detective. A detective? Yeah. Well, anyway, he came around this morning to ask me if I could give him a line on some of Frankie's friends. What did you tell him? I didn't tell him anything. I had nothing to tell him. Oh, <laughs> good. Uh, well, you, you've got nothing to worry about anyway. You're not mixed up with anything like that, are you? No, but... Well, I was just wondering about those bennies and things we've been fooling around with. Well, I know we only took a few at a couple of parties for some laughs, but don't you think it's kind of dangerous now that they're cracking down on all the younger kids? Dangerous? <laughs> Heck no. Well, we only do that for a little fun. Besides, you're here in my uncle's house with all the privacy in the world. Why, no one could find out about anything we do here. And suppose they do. We're just having a little fun, that's all. Yeah, I guess maybe you're right. But I thought I ought to tell you just in case. Well, I'm glad you did, Bob. At least it'll get it off your mind. You got nothing to worry about, though, but I'm glad you did. Well, I guess I'll go in for a swim now. You coming in? No, no, you go ahead. I got to take care of a few things for my uncle, then I'll join you. Okay, then I'll see you later. Sure, go on. Yes, sir, you don't know how glad I am that you said something. Scally, this is Hal Holmes. Yeah. A detective. For the love of... The next thing you'll tell me is that his kid cousin is Attorney General of the United States. What kind of a double cross is this? Nothing to worry about. You're beginning to sound like a broken record. Listen to me, Holmes. We've held off as long as we can. I've got to have some more stuff right away. Start lining up some of these kids. The exercises I'm giving these fat dames wouldn't reduce a fever. Besides, I got messages from three of the joints. They haven't got any more stuff either. Now, start lining up some of those bobby soxers and line them up fast. And, and don't tell me I got nothing to worry about. Mr. America, is he really going to be working here? Yeah, the boss hired him a couple of days ago. <laughs> Boy, with that hunger man outside, we'll be pulling in more chumps than we can handle. You're not kidding. I'd walk a couple of blocks for that myself. Uh-huh, he's just gorgeous. Yeah? Well, listen, if I catch any of you female wolves swooning around that guy, I'll throw you out of here on your beautiful... Yes, me? Okay. <laughs> he's just another man. But what a man. Yeah? Well, listen... Few chicks work here, and so help me, you'll work. If any of you decide you'd rather stand around and admire Mr. America, just let me know. And I'll see that Mr. Scally has some new bait for his chubby customers. I don't get it, Ruby. How come Mr. America's in on this racket? He isn't. I'm glad you reminded me. Don't let him know anything about the dinitrophenols. He's a nice, clean, upstanding American boy, and Miss Scally wants him kept that way. If he should see you giving one of the girls a pill, just tell him it's vitamins or something. Home show up yet? You mean your nephew, boss? Nephew? I hope that punk knows what he's doing. Well, you can ask him. Here he comes now. Uh, hello, Holmes. Sit down. Talk to you in a minute. 
Our latest attraction is due to arrive this morning. Be nice to him. He ought to pull in a few more of our fat friends. Mr. America, huh? You gonna cut him in on the play, boss? Nah, yeah, not him. He's got ideals. Hey, ain't that kind of dangerous? No. What he don't know, don't hurt him. He don't know what it's all about and see that he stays that way. We use him as a sugar coating on the pill. Keep him out front where he belongs. I bet he ain't so much. I got muscles right here, boss. I'll make that punk with you. One of these days, pug, you're gonna run into somebody who'll break those fingers of yours. Okay, maybe you're right, boss. But I bet this ain't the guy. Well, I got muscles. Yeah. You've got muscles you've never used yet. <laughs> all right, all right. Get out on the floor and put your muscles to work. When Eiferman comes in, show him where to dress and then give him a locker. Then send him in here. I want to see what I've bought. Okay, boss. And uh, don't worry about your short coating. I'll take real good care of him. Yeah, I'll take care of him real good. <laughs> what a guy. Smart as a whip, huh, boss? He's a good boy, Tony. That's what he's told. Keeps his mouth shut. He's right about those muscles, though. He's pretty tough. But he hadn't better hurt Mr. America's hands. I got use for him. Oh, sure, boss. We got use for him. <laughs> I mean, you've got use for him. What's new with the kid? I think we may be able to do a little business tonight, Mr. Scally. I've planned a little party for one of the girls. It's her birthday or something. All the kids will be there. I'll need a few goofies to pass out, and then I think we can start moving. These things are important, Holmes. Be careful. Don't go too fast. We can't afford any slip-ups. Is Kid Winner's going to be there tonight? Oh, yeah. He and his girlfriend and a couple... Your girlfriend? You mean Valentine's kid? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> What's eating you? <laughs> I was just thinking, boss, what Judge Valentine would say if she knew her daughter was playing around in your backyard. <laughs> You know, that may be funnier than you think tonight, eh? I wonder what the judge would say. <laughs> Gee, boss, I didn't think it was that funny. Oh, it is, Tony, it is. <laughs> you know, I was just entertaining a most satisfying thought. Yes, you're very satisfying. What's that, Mr. Scally? That Valentine has been after something on me for months, hasn't she? Yeah, I guess that's right. Yes, indeed. Tell me. How oh, you come along with your photography, Tony? You got your camera? Me, boss? Oh, sure, I got seven of them. I got a graphic, a Leica, a contact, a Mercury, a... Help the judge along. Yes, sir. I think we're going to see the Judge Rosalind Valentine gets the evidence she's been looking for. Tony, tell me. You see, easy, gal? Easy, oh, sh... My kid. Look, tell what I want you to do. Nice. Hi, Ruby. Has our Mr. America shown up yet? Not so far. Why? I'm supposed to be his nursemaid. Oh, <laughs> boss's orders, eh? Uh -huh. Well, you better do it. Mr. Scally usually means what he says. Hey, you're a dame. What's he got that I haven't got? Well, I got muscles. <laughs> yeah, but he's got a public. Better go carry his bags. He's waiting for somebody to roll out the red carpet. I'll roll him out. What do you want, you punk? I believe I'm supposed to work here. Are you Mr. America? So they say. Call me George, though, huh? George Eichmann. Sure, George. Call me Puck. Put it here. Strong man, huh? So they say. What's your opinion, Puck? Yeah. Sure, George. You're all right. Put it here. I mean, what do you got in the bags? Oh, just some stuff I used to keep in shape with. I'll help you with one of them. That'd be fine. Try this one. Take this one here and we'll get to work. Rocky Ken Yeah. You know, Frankie Clinton is in pretty serious trouble. But we're trying to help him all we can. You're a pretty good friend of Frankie's, and you can help him a lot if you want to. Do you? 
Maybe you youngsters don't realize it, but the policy of the department is to stay on your side. Especially when we know someone higher up is a real cause of your getting into trouble. Yeah, I'd like to help him if I could, but I don't know nothing about it. I haven't seen Frankie much lately. But you know a lot of people that Frankie knows. A few, I guess. Well, you just tell me if any of these people mean anything to you. Fred Smith. No, I never heard of him. Been around the pool hall on 8th Street? Oh, once in a while. Ever heard of Fred Smith around there? No, I never did. All right. Bob Winter. Yeah, I know him. He used to live in our neighborhood. But he's all right. He's a nice fella. He never got in no trouble. Okay. Al Holmes. Holmes? I don't know. Al Holmes? Seems like, did he work in a cafeteria or something? I think so. Well, I've seen him around, but I never had anything to do with him. What did he look like? Oh, kind of, I don't know. Kind of nice dresser. Is he tall? No. Well, not very tall. Is he short? Kind of medium, I guess. Kind of husky. Now you say you never had nothing to do with him. Why was that? Didn't you like him or what? No, he, he just... Well, I never knew him very well. Hasn't Holmes got an uncle? Big shot on. Yeah, Simmons. I think he lives over in Magnolia. He travels around. You sure it isn't Stephen? No, Simmons. All right, Umberto Scali. No, I never heard of him. You sure now? This is important to Frankie. No, honest, I never heard of him. All right, son. You've helped more than you think. Keep your nose clean. I'll see you around. That cross stain is looking worse every day, Mr. Skelly. What do you think we ought to do? Uh, keep her away from here for a week or so. I suggested that to her, but she insists upon sticking around until she's down to 115. Ivorman works with her every day, and he's liable to get wise. Cut her down with the nitrophenols. Give her a benzodrine or something to give her a lift. She's liable to kick off on us. I'll reduce her dose. You know, she seems to have picked up some sort of an itch. Yeah? Give me those woolen sweatshirts she's been wearing. Give her a clean one. How do you do? I'm Miss McKenzie. You're new, aren't you? <laughs> to tell the truth, I'm a little shopworn, but I'm new around here. I presume you want to take our reducing treatment? Well, honey, if you think I need it, my husband seems to think I'm losing my youthful figure. <laughs> well, husbands are that way. What did you weigh when you got married? Stripped. Well, you know, <laughs> only 240. Oh, and uh, what do you weigh now? I don't know. When I take off my girdle, I can't even see the scales. <laughs> What's your name? Tessie. What's your last name? Tessie. Tessie? Yeah, Tessie. T-E-S-S-E, -S -S -E, Tessie. Oh, I thought it was your first name. No, it's my last name. Well, what is your first name? I told you. Tessie. Tessie? Yeah, Tessie. T-E-S-S-I-E, -S -S -E, Tessie. Now, wait a minute. Let's get this straight. Is your name Tessie Tessie? Which name? Both names. Yeah, Tessie Tessie. Tessie Tessie. Tessie T. Tessie. What's the T for? Tallulah. Ain't two Tessies enough? Tessie T. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Donati. Oh, Mr. Donati, I'd like you to meet Mrs. Tessie, Mr. Donati. How do you do, Mrs. Uh, is uh, Tessie your first name or your last name? Please, let's don't go into that again. Just call me Tessie. <laughs> All right, but uh, you're the best prospect we've ever had around here. Thank you. <laughs> He's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, will you help me fill out her card? Sure. <laughs> now, Mrs. Tessie, may we just have your measurements? How do you want them, honey? In inches or feet? <laughs> <laughs> That's no joke. The last gym I went to I had to use a navigator. A navigator? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tony. Now that we've had our little joke, uh, shall we continue? <laughs> Mrs. Tessie, would you just hold that right there, please? 
No, honey. <laughs> you, you just stand still. <laughs> 51. Once again. <laughs> 47. 47. When you add them up, it sure comes to a hell of a figure. <laughs> yeah. 64. 64. <laughs> now, have you got those, Johnny? Check. Okay, let's just check them. Bust, 51. Roger. Waist, 47. Roger. Hip, 64. Roger. <laughs> Roger's almost as big as I am. <sighs> Man, what a feed. That steak was out of this world, honey. Which one? What do you mean, which one? Did I have more than one? You had three, Sergeant Kerrigan. And if you don't mind my saying so, I can understand where you put it. Trade secret. I learned it at the police academy. How to put away a nice, juicy T-bone in one easy meal. My favorite subject. I majored in it. Did they also teach you what to do after you put it away? It seems to me I remember one of the courses. How to wash the dinner dishes in one easy sink full of soap suds. If I remember correctly, I, I flunked that one. Well, I just took it up with the Board of Education, and we've decided to give you another chance. The examination is right through here. Yes, ma'am. All I can say is... Yes? Your word is my command. It was a wonderful dinner, Mrs. Valentine. Thanks very much. Not at all. Come again soon, Bob. I will, thanks. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, Bye, dear. Later. Have a good time. Oh, he's cute, all right, but, ooh, what a wolf. Why? What did he do? Ask me sometime when I'm not so sober. Hi, kids. Let's see, huh? Hi. Everybody cool? Sure. Yeah. So far. Hi. Oh, oh, gee, Howard, it's just, just wonderful of you to give this party for me. Oh, that's okay, honey. Uncle Bert left me the key to the cellar. Uh -huh. We're stocked up for this party. Ooh. We're gonna get oh, you're my Oh. <laughs> yeah, Tony? Kids just got here. Yeah, she's all set, loaded, and ready to go. Okay, goodbye. Hey, Nick's on the business with Margie around. Sure, pal. What do you have, girls? Straight bourbon. Cook high. Thanks, Al. I don't think I'll have anything right now. Oh, come on, kids. How about a short one? Well, yeah, this is my birthday, remember? Yeah, Marge, you've never been a wet blanket. Let's drink to gray. Well, all right. Just a short one with a coke. Well, me too, then, but, but not too short. Oh, Margie. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Francis? Oh, thank you. Sure no, thing. you're Any <laughs> happy return? Oh, oh <laughs> Sergeant, you said on the phone you'd found out a couple of things. Yes, Your Honor. Anything important? It might be. I haven't been able to tie anything together yet. I'm afraid it's going to take a little time to crack this case. Come on, your coffee will get cold. Hmm. Give me a little too, Jerry. All right. Well, what have you found out so far? I had a list of names of everyone I thought could possibly be a link in the case. I've asked about all of them. Here are the results. Fred Smith. Obviously a phony. No reaction anywhere. Bob Winter. You don't suspect Bob. I don't get excited. Of course I don't. I just use Bob's name as a sort of bait. I'm afraid Jerry isn't too familiar with police methods, Your Honor. <laughs> well, he never explains anything to me, Mrs. Valentine. How am I supposed to know anything about it? Well, to continue, Humberto Scali. As I said before, no one knew him. Andy and Francis Williams, friends of Bob's, in the clear. Yes, I know the Williams children. Al Holmes. Al Holmes. I don't seem to remember that name. That's the boy who was Uncle Owens at the pool. They went swimming there tonight. 
Oh, yes. Is he in the clear? Well, to tell you the truth, Your Honor, I don't know. Reactions I got to his name weren't what I expected. One kid I spoke to said he knew him, then changed his mind. Another said he had heard of him, but never had anything to do with him. Another stalled around and finally admitted meeting him at a pool hall. Well, it's possible that those boys wouldn't know him too well. He's new around here, isn't he? That's what I understand. But doesn't it seem funny to you that a boy whose uncle gives him the complete run of his estate should be living in a tiny apartment in a cheap section of town? And Bob says they met while Holmes was working in a cafeteria. Why should Holmes have to take a job like that? When you put it that way, it doesn't sound too good. Have you checked with headquarters? Not yet, but I can if you think it'd do some good. Mm, I think you should. Frankly, with Margie and those other children up there, I'm a little worried. I think you ought to call downtown. Right. Oh, this is going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, here we luck. go. Hey, come on here. Oh, not too high. Hey. Ouch. Ouch. Spin her around. Sure. Oh, they're right here. Okay. Here we go. Here. One, two. Oh. Oh. <laughs> interview with a boy whose testimony led to the arrest and conviction of Umberto Scali five years ago. I believe I mentioned a case to you before, Sergeant. You know, the filling station holder. Yeah, I remember now. The kid had taken Benzedrine. I don't believe we have to play the record, because I think what we want is down near the end. And if you will help us find that person, we can help you to get probation. What do you want me to do? Tell us who drove that car. A guy by the name of Smith, Fred Smith. All right. 
Where can we find him? I don't know. At his uncle's house, maybe. Where does his uncle live? On the Magnum 1247. What's his uncle's name? Simmons. Simmons, eh? What does he do? I don't know. I knew I was right. You know who Simmons turned out to be? I could make a pretty good guess. Right. Umberto Scali. And he was arrested the very same day. How about Smith? Who was he? He was never found. I could make another guess. You think that Smith and Hal Holmes are the same? You'd make a pretty good detective yourself, Your Honor. Jerry, do you have that Magnolia Street address? Oh, I have it. I don't have it. think so, Dave. I have it. Marjorie gave it to me earlier this evening. Hello? Sergeant Carrigan, the narcotics detail. Have a squad car downstairs right away. Check. Don't worry about the kids. I'll send them all home. Jerry, you can judge Valentine my car. I'll see you all later. You may think it's funny, but I don't. How do I know you didn't take a picture of Marge? Oh, I wouldn't kid you. I wouldn't do a trick like that to house friends. Gee, I like your kids. Look, look, I'll give you the film out of the camera. <laughs> Gee, I really like your kids. Here, take the film. Oh, I still think it was a bum gag. Oh, Tony's a good guy, Bob. Yeah, Come on, take it easier. He didn't mean any harm. Sure. Come okay. On, get a drink. Come on. Just a minute, you. Are you home? Why, yes, I am. I don't believe we've met, though. But if you're a friend of Bob's, well, you're very welcome. Won't you join our party? I don't think so, Holmes. I think I'd much rather have you join mine. You're under arrest. I'm holding you on suspicion. Suspicion of what? Contributing to the delinquency of minors. How's that for a start? Delinquency? Why, there must be some mistake. This is a private residence. We're having a private little party. Private residence, huh? Whose? My uncle, Mr. Stevens. But he's away on business. Stevens, huh? Wouldn't be Scally, would it, Holmes? Umberto Scally? Bob, you take Margie home. Come on, Holmes. Jeez. Some cop showed up and arrested Hal Holmes. Oh. <laughs> Terrible. Well, I don't know why they do things like that to people. Marge, come on, we're going home. All right. Oh, my dress is all wet while I wear. Here, take this jacket. All right. My dress. Oh, my pocketbook. Goodbye. Hello, Scally there? Let me talk to you. Hello, boss? Yeah, the cops busted up the party. They got Holmes. Yeah, don't worry about it. They got nothing on Holmes. That is, as long as he keeps his mouth shut. I had a feeling something like this would happen. Yeah, don't worry about her. I got a little surprise for her. to make some progress. It's a cinch Holmes is the elusive Fred Smith, but we'll have to find some way of proving it. Scally is Stevens, all right, but we haven't anything on him. 
If we could just prove that Holmes is the contact man in all these cases, we'd have Scully just where we want him. Won't Frankie Clinton identify Hal Holmes? No, not yet. Frankie's afraid to talk. If we could tie up the rest of it, bring Holmes and Scully to trial, Frankie would probably get over his fright and loosen up. It's evidence we need, Your Honor. Evidence. Did I hear my name mentioned? What in the name of... You have more nerve than I imagined, Mr. Scully. I'm here to see you on business, Judge Valentine. Alone. Listen, you... Inspector! I'll see Mr. Scully alone. I'll be just outside if you want me. Well, we're alone. Judge Valentine, you know, I've got to hand it to you. You've done very well in the five years since we last met. Yes, sir, I've got to hand it to you. I thought you said you were here on business. Last night, the police arrested a friend of mine. I was under the impression that he was your nephew. Now, Holmes is not my nephew. Well, you admit you own the house and that you're Mr. Stevens. The house is mine, but... Uh, I'm afraid I've never heard of this, Mr. Stevens. I understand that your daughter attended a little party at my house last night. Sorry, I wasn't there to Mr. meet her. Mr. Scully, you're going a little too far. I'm in a position to go as far as I like. Evidence is what you've been looking for, isn't it? Okay. Here's your evidence. Exhibit A. Use it. I think we understand each other, Your Honor. Of all the low-down sneaking, the gall of him to come marching in here like that, knowing we can't touch him. Just wait a lot. Inspector, I wonder if you could see if Dave Kerrigan would come over to my office. I'd like to see him as soon as possible. Yes, ma'am. I'll have him sent over right away. I'm afraid you got to that party a little too late last night, Sergeant. Too late? I don't understand. Mr. Scally was here this morning, and he made me a very one-sided proposition. I wish I could have been here to see you pin his ears back. Sergeant, Dave, as a mother, I'm really ashamed to have to show you this. But under the circumstances, I have no alternative. Mr. Scully brought this picture to me this morning to tie my hands. I have no doubt that he thought that rather than expose my daughter, that I wouldn't press this investigation. He was partly right. I'll have to resign. Resign? But Judge Valentine. If this picture ever got in the wrong hands, my work here would be entirely wasted. And I still believe in that theory, Sergeant. Whatever Margie did last night, or whatever caused her to do what she did, I'm sure it was my fault, not hers. I don't believe it. It's a frame. The whole thing, believe me, Your Honor. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do. Mrs. Valentine, before you do anything, promise me that you'll give me 48 hours. Just two days to prove this whole thing is a dirty frame. There's a negative to that picture someplace, and without it, Scally hasn't got any aces. I'll find that negative. How can you possibly find it? Just promise me you won't do anything for 48 hours. All right, I promise, sir. Hello, Dave. Hello, Dave. Hello, Bob, Jerry. Look, I'm sorry about last night. I didn't think anything like that would happen. Tell me, what did happen, Bob? Well, we were playing blind man's bluff around the pool. Margie fell in and couldn't find a bathing suit after she got out. She put a towel around her, and someone knocked her back in the water without the towel. Well, when we put the lights out so she could climb out, this joker set up the flash bulb. That's just what I had thinking was a frame. They pulled the old gypsy switch on you. They had another camera with a real film in it. Bob, that picture's going to cause a lot of trouble unless we can find that negative. You can help me if you will. Darn right I will. Just let me get my hands on that guy. No, that's not what I had in mind. There must be something I can do, too. There is. Make us some coffee. Bob, Judge Valentine is going to be forced to resign. You're a smart girl. Come on over. I have a little present for you. Okay. 
Come in. Hey, there's a kid out here by the name of Winters. He said he wants to see him. Winter? It's a Valentine kid's boyfriend. I wonder what he wants. Oh. Well, I tell him. Ask Winter to come in, Pug. I'll talk to him. Okay. Say, come on in, kid. Thanks. Come in, Mr. Winter. Sit down. Thank you, sir. Now then, what can I do for you? Well, I'm a friend of Hal Holmes. Hal Holmes? Hal Holmes. I don't believe I know the name. He told me to ask for Mr. Simmons and mention Fred Smith. I see. Just what did this Mr. Holmes have in mind when he sent you to see me? He said he could get a job. What sort of a job? Well, he said that with the contacts I have, I'd make a good field man for you. Kind of a traveling salesman. I suppose he told you what he's selling? Yeah, sure. I know all about the goofies. You're a smart boy, Mr. Winter. You seem to know quite a few things. I've heard about your contacts, too. I imagine they would be very useful. That's what I thought. I imagine the judge would love to know all about my business. And your sister's boyfriend, the detective. He'd like to know, too, would he? Come on, Winter. Who put you up to this? I'll lay off. Lay off, will you? What do I care what some judge or a flatfoot want to know? What do I care? Al just said I could make some dough, that's all. If you got somebody else for the job that knows all the kids, go ahead. I can take a hint. Now, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Sit down. Okay, I'll give you a try. Maybe taking on more than you bargained for. Al's job wasn't easy. But you'll be able to pick up a few extra bucks here and there. Swell. Thanks, Mr. Scully. Sorry I had to push you around, but now you understand. You can't be too careful. Sure, that's okay, boss. Okay, Winter. Come back this evening and meet the rest of the boys. Okay, boss. See you later. He puts on a very convincing act. I want to know what his angle is. Don't let him out of your sight, Pug. I'll stick to him like we were Siamese twins. Calling all cars, calling all cars. Hello, Miss Valentine. Hello, Sergeant Olson. Where's my mother? She left for court about a half hour ago, Margie. Is there anything I can do? Oh, no. I was just looking for some steps. Hello? Hello, Margie. Anything wrong? That's all right. I'll see you later. All right, Margie. Goodbye. All right, ladies, spread out a little, and spread your elbows. We'll have more room to work with. That's it. Get comfortable. All right, we'll start our exercises today. Say there, miss. Come on in here and get your gym clothes on, and we can start working. Um, but, but I... Come on, Al. You're holding up the class. I'm going to show you ladies an exercise that'll streamline your hip. And as soon as this young lady gets in line here, we'll start with our exercise. Our first exercise is the toe touching exercise. Are you ready? One, two, one. Mrs. Goldberg, bend over. One, two, that's fine. Miss Tessie. Yes? That's your first name or your last name? What difference does it make? Take your choice. Okay. Miss Riley. Yes. Mrs. Cross. Yes. Miss Anderson. Yes. Miss Goldberg. Yes. Let's see. I don't believe I have your name, Miss. I was trying to tell you I wasn't part of the class. I'm looking for a job. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought. I guess you're not here to reduce, are you? No, I'm not. I want to speak to Mr. Scally. Golly, I'm awfully sorry. Look, if you'd like, I'll go see if Mr. Scally's in his office. Well, would you? Thank you very much. You're very welcome.
Come in. Is the young lady to see you, Mr. Scowley? Well, ask the young lady to come in, please, George. Sis? Sis? Dear Bob and Dave, if you two can play detective, so can I. I've gone to the gym to get that negative. I see it. Hello, police headquarters. Let me speak to Sergeant Carroll. So, Miss Summers, you want to be a physical instructress, eh? Oh, very much. I love to work in gymnasium. Well, you certainly came prepared. You're a very beautiful girl. Thank you, sir. I know I just love to work here for you. My pleasure, I assure you, Miss Summers. I think we'll be able to find a place for you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Scully. Carol, you uh, just fill out this form. Name, address, whatever other information it asks for. Pardon me a second. Mm -hmm. Be right back. Hello? Yeah, it's me, Tony. This is Punk. Yeah, yeah, I followed him when it's... Sure, he's working with the cops. And that ain't all. is really Bob Winter's sister, huh? Yeah, it's a shame. She looks like a nice girl, too. She'll be a nice girl when I'm through with her. Let's take care of Miss Winter before her clever little brother arrives. He's liable to bring cops, and that means trouble. But, uh, of course, if Miss Winter can't be found, they can't prove she was there, can they? Say, that's right. Summers, find what you were looking for? Oh, I was, well, that is, I was just looking for an eraser. Did you find an eraser? No, I, I didn't. I'm sorry I made such a mess of everything. I, I didn't mean to. I'll clean it all up. Oh, I wouldn't think of having you do that. If you didn't find an eraser, what did you find, Miss Summers? Nothing. I didn't find anything. Oh, come now, you must have found something. I leave so many things lying around. Some pictures, perhaps, taken here and there. Or a negative. Yes, a negative. Isn't that what you were looking for? You little flatfoot spy. Hyperman, you! Let go of me. Tony. Get some rope and take care of these two. We got some work to do. Okay, boss. Oh, oh hello, dear. I didn't hear you come in. You thought it was kind of quiet. You had dinner? I had a hamburger. Well, so getting to be a steady diet with you. We have a vegetable or two left in the world, you know. Uh, guess I forgot. Anything new happen today? Oh, I'm tired out. Something's always popping in my department. I don't know what's come over you children. My court's in session long before the other magistrates are even awake. What's the matter, Margie? What's the matter? You know what the matter is. You don't have to pretend any long, Mother. All a picture. Oh, that's it. To see you at the office. I found the picture in the drawer. I wasn't snooping. I was just looking for some stamps. How did that picture, Margie? What has happened? Oh no, I can't remember. All I know is that it happened at the party at Mr. Stevens' house. 
Somebody gave me a Coke. And then everybody began to laugh, and they all ran around the pool, and then, I don't know, it's all kind of hazy. Well, that's the very thing I've been fighting. That's the thing I've been preaching to every family in hometown. Maybe that's the trouble. I haven't been devoting enough time to just being a mother. Oh, mother, it isn't your fault, it's mine. Oh, don't blame yourself, you've been a wonderful mother. Nobody could be any better. It's me. I thought it was smart to run around. I thought it was just being a good sport and having fun. I, I thought, oh, I don't know what I thought. You've been grandmother, it's just that I've let you down, that's all. Margie Ballantyne, daughter of one of the most successful citizens, Judge Rosalind Ballantyne, has been proclaimed juvenile delinquent number one. <laughs> That'll make wonderful reading, won't it, Mother? Oh, Margie, please don't. Well, it will, I know it will. I'll be a public figure. I'll be famous, won't I? Well, won't I? Say something, say anything. Call me a tramp, call me cheap. Call me anything you like, because you'll probably be right. You'll probably be right. They didn't see me like this. Won't you please let me talk to you, Margie? Not now, Mother. I'm all right. I'll be out in a little while. All right, dear. Is her pulse stronger? A little. Don't you think you ought to get some rest? No, thanks, nurse. I'll be all right. I'd rather stay. All right. I got the emergency call on the car radio. I came right over. What's the score, Doc? How's the kid? Well, she'll come out of it all right. She's had a pretty close call. She's still in a coma, oh, but here I... you are, Doctor. Oh, Miss Carla, this is Sergeant Carrot. How do you do? Hmm. Pulse is much stronger. Respiration's better. These kids have tremendous rallying power. Well, that's a great relief. Is the judge here? She's with her daughter now. Well, I won't disturb her then. Uh, just exactly, what did she take? Well, some form of hypnotic, a barbiturate. What form it was, we really don't know. It doesn't make much difference. They all act about the same way. But judging from her condition, I'd say it was either nebutol or secondol. Is there anything else, doctor? I don't think so. Continue with the saline and the glucose intravenously and also the benzedrine. 10 cc should be enough. Is there any respiratory change? Call me. Yes, doctor. Nice to have met you, Sergeant. Thank you. You're giving her Benzedrine. Is that used in treatment, too? Oh, yes. In cases like this, there's a tremendous depression. It takes a powerful stimulant to counteract it. 
I see. Yes, if drugs like this were used for medical purposes only and properly prescribed, we wouldn't have cases like this. But I've heard of people committing suicide when these pills were obtained through a doctor's prescription. Well, that's true. But the physician is not always at fault. I know that some doctors will prescribe a hundred tablets to save writing out a new prescription. I know that some druggists sell it illegally, and that in some states a prescription is not even required. The solution lies in public education. And until such a time as uniform state laws are introduced governing the sale of such hypnotics, cases like this will be as common as ever. I've got to agree with you there, Doc. You say these cases are common. Yes, drug poisonings are very common to a doctor. Take this case, for example. It's a woman. I brought her in here just a little while ago. A DOA case. Dead on arrival, huh? Mrs. Amanda Cross. A, granulo a granulocytosis. It's just another form of drug poisoning. She was filled with dinitrophenol. Dinitrophenol? That's a weight reducer, isn't it? It has been used as such. But any poison is a weight reducer, although no reputable physician would prescribe one. Excuse me, Doctor. Sergeant, headquarters is calling you. Well, what about? Or the radio, Bob Winters. He says it's a matter of life or death. Holy mackerel, I forget all about the kids. Come on. All right, we're clearing out. Go get the stuff out of the locker. Now, it's for you two. I come up to him and I say, Scally, this is what you get for playing rough with my friends. And not only that, this is what you're going to get for getting gay with Chuck Goldman. And not only that... Chuck, I'm... what happened? What happened? One, two, he knocks me cold. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad it's all over. I hear the city has turned the gymnasium over to you children. That's right, and the inspector told me that the city council has also appropriated funds to turn Scally's house into a teenager club. Seems Mr. Scally won't have use for it anymore. <laughs> There's going to be a gym program, too. It'd be a wonderful thing for every city to set up a program like this. These clubs would be a first-line defense against juvenile delinquency of every kind. Not only that, but it'd give the underprivileged kids a chance at some fun, too. Frankie Clinton, he's on probation. A club like that would give him a chance to meet the right kind of people for a change. 
I saw Frankie yesterday. He wants to start a class in automobile mechanics. Hey, I could start a dancing class. Could hey, you know, I got a great idea. I'll teach boxing. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? I said something wrong? <laughs> <laughs>